why we're doing what we're doing. Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to The Cube at IBM Edge 2015 here in Las Vegas. Had two days uh, talking about lots of executives, talking to service providers, talking to customers. Uh, excited to have with me, first time guest on theCUBE, Jatter Ho, VP of Cloud Services with NTT Data. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, so, so Jatter, uh, first of all, I think most people in IT are familiar with NTT. I mean, one of the largest telcos in the world. Uh, but can you tell us a little bit about your role there? You've got cloud in your title, uh, and, and what's the, the NTT Data division? Okay, so NTT Data is the system integration arm NTT group. It is the sixth largest system integrator in the world, you know, with I think about 75,000 individuals working worldwide in 40 different countries across about 25 different industry verticals. So as you know, NTT itself is a much bigger company with about 230,000 employees, but obviously NTT data is a big significant arm of NTT, of the NTT group, so to speak. Yeah, to 230,000, not yeah. quite as big as IBM, but uh, pretty darn big it's when we talk about It's starting to get close, right? And I think the, the key metric from the NTT Group's side of things is I think last year we became the number one in terms of data center space with over 220 data centers worldwide. So that's kind of the key metric that we've achieved in 2014. All right, great, Let, let's get into it. Uh, t tell us a little bit about you know, what brings you to this show and, and your partnership with IBM. So. This year, you know, the major announcement that we have is around HANA and Power, and TT Data has been you know, strongly involved in a collaborative effort with SAP and IBM to test out and validate the performance of HANA on Power, and we've seen some very significant results based on an initial testing that we've done. You know, SAP owns the governance of this initiative, but NTT has been very involved in the testing, development, and optimization, along with the support of IBM. All right, so yeah, I mean, SAP had their big conference last week with, with Sapphire. Uh, HANA's been one of you know, the main discussions I've heard right. uh, about SAP the last couple of works. How, where are we, you know? Uh, you know how, are the solutions really starting to come together, and you know, are, are we at the inflection point for kind of massive adoption? I, I think so, I think really it is starting, you know, it's been talked about for a number of years now, but we're really starting to see, get traction around different customers being interested in HANA. They've in invested possibly in the appliance and now they're starting to bump up against some limits. So we're starting to look at other options to do HANA on different um, technologies and Power being a great platform to build off of just from course specifications has really been you know, this big differentiator for us in, in terms of testing out you know, the, the type of performance we've been looking at. So one of the, I think the metrics that have been quoted is, is we're looking at anywhere from 40 to 100 times speed up just by deploying HANA on power, you know, as opposed to a traditional appliance type model or an x86 on Oracle. So that's, it's a big you know, performance bump. And that's only at the beginning of things. We will still going through iterative efforts of optimizing further. Yeah, so, so obviously as a, as a systems integrator, you know, you, you, you've got to choose your pro projects wisely. Uh, there's so many different things going on out there. Uh, you know, what, what about HANA plus power plus your solution, uh, d you know, makes it a winner? R really, I think, you know, SAP is a key practice for us. You know, I think we have something like 2,700 customers um, worldwide are running on SAP. And so for us, it's a key investment for us that you know, we want to be able to help customers run quicker, better, faster, stronger uh, across the board. And you know, it is truly our belief that HANA on power would be that key differentiator, both on-prem and in cloud. So I think that's kind of the major thing that we're looking at doing in the near future. All right, so, so I've heard a lot about performance uh, when it comes to power, so maybe we can skip over that piece. Talk to me a little bit about you know, management, flexibility, agility. Uh, how, how does, how does the, this solution compare to you know, what's well, in the Well, I think market? you just took all the points, the talking <laughs> points out for me, right? You know, I think those actually do cover all, pretty much all the different pieces. One of the other data points we've been sort of stating is that you know, it gives us a lot more flexibility to bring things up quickly. 
uh, we were able to bring up power on HANA in literally in, in a week, right? And we're now able to start deploying things a lot faster, literally out the box for customers. So the, the investment in time is very minimal compared to having to do your roll your own and be able to have to take additional time to go deploy this. Yeah, uh, so I, I wonder if we could dig a little down. If you, if you look at kind of cloud, one of the things as an analyst I always joke is, you know, security and management are the two things that we can bang on forever because it seems we, we haven't solved that problem. Um, we t talk about management maybe specifically and uh, happy to hear about security if, if that's a piece, but you know, how, how is the solution helping to really solve that management problem because you know, that, that's a huge challenge for customers. Well, I think the man management of HANA is going to be an evolving process. I think as people, get more experience of it and uh, gain additional capabilities, that's going to be an evolving exercise and we're heavily engaged with SAP and IBM to go down that path. However, you know, from a security standpoint, you know, given shared infrastructure, you know, I think it, it's a key point to make that we do segregate customers' information individually from other customers so that we have that proper segregation. Uh, as you said, you know, seg security is absolutely key and paramount to a, a lot of these exercises. And different providers have different interpretations of what that level of security is. For us, I think it is absolutely, you know, kind of forefront for us that, you know, the operation of an application remain and have the same user experience as it is on-prem as well as in the cloud. So there's no need to do, do a lot of adaptation to move your application into the cloud, so to speak. Yeah. Um. So, you know, what are the plans for the future? You know, how, how are you looking at this really as a cloud service? So we're starting to look, we, we started off with BW, right? And, and you know, with the announcement of S4 on HANA, that's kind of the next step in roadmaps. Uh, and, you know, space and discussions over the last few days, we're going to be continuing to, to engage with IBM as, as SAP to deploy these things out to you know, different customers. We're now got a target list of customers we're going after, you know, we're starting to accept, and, and we're actually seeing quite a, f a fair bit of interest in that area to start testing this out. Customers have had investments in power over the last couple of years, you know, investments in appliances, they're coming back to us and saying, you know, we've seen the limits, we want to do more, how can we do more, how can we do it more quickly? All right, can you talk a little bit about the partnerships? I mean, it, it, it's, it's, you're taking SAP, you're taking IBM, you're, you're taking the rest of it. Uh, how, how's it been to work through that? You know, what, 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 any kind of you know, advice that you'd look to kind of give the ecosystem as to how they can help you do your job better or things you want to look for from a white space standpoint? I think you know, ultimately you know, it's kind of a three-way collaborative effort, right? And this is not something we started off you know, three months ago, you know, as so one of my colleagues has stated, it's been a two year journey to kind of go through and put this whole effort together. So it's been, you know, very close collaboration between IBM, SAP, and SAP being, SAP hasn't really revealed much of their roadmap. So, you know, we try to keep as much lockstep as possible as SAP announces new capabilities. All right, so, so Jadar, have you, have you been to the show before? I was here last year. All right, so well, you know what, what brings you back to IBM Edge? You know what, what's kind of the value that you see in coming here? You know, talking to your peers, talking to IBM. Well, IBM is a is a key partner for NTT Data. Um, I actually sit on the Software Divine Environment Tech Advisory Board, so you know that's part of the exercise that brings me here. You know, for the last couple of years. All right, so uh, you, you're based in the Valley, uh, I, I believe. So That's correct. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, you know, we, we throw out terms like cloud and we all argue over definitions and what's going on. Um, based, you know, you, you guys, I mean, totally fit the cloud services that, that I would say. Um, how do you see what you're doing as opposed to kind of the general uh, discussion of what's going on in the Valley? Well, a large part of the Valley proposition for NTT's data cloud is that we're able to pick up enterprise apps pretty much as this and move it over to our cloud without having to adapt to other cloud providers. There's certainly nothing wrong with that approach, it's just a different uh, approach to things. And for us, it typically the customer base that we deal with are a customer that has um, the desire to move a l large part of operations into our cloud. So we actually spend a lot of time helping them pick up and migrate it into and, uh, our cloud operations. 
So that's kind of the key differentiator, not not just around that, but also the fact that we support not just x86 but power in the cloud. Yeah, I, 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 it, it's interesting. One of the things we look at is you know in IT, you know we always just add stuff and we never get rid of anything. We've been trying to help users understand you know what they do and, and what they can get rid of. of obviously, going to service providers or certain things that um, it's kind of the modern outsourcing, if you will. But right. it, it's taking care of that stuff. Um, we said, you know, friends don't let friends build data centers anymore because, you know, there's companies that are really good at doing that and, um, you know, most companies, uh, other than kind of the real estate people, you know, aren't good at that at things. Um, I'm curious, you know, how do you help companies kind of move up the stack and I, I think that's kind of one of your key value props. Right, actually, that was, that's an interesting point you made. I, I was at a CIO advisory dinner several months ago and that's one of the things I brought up is the fact that NTT is one of the few companies that actually engages in that activity, right? We have 220 data centers worldwide, and one of the other differentiators is one of the few companies in the world that actually owns ships that lay cable across the Atlantic and the Pacific, right? So as part of the exercise of helping customers move up the stack, you know, we are able to take a lot of pain out of the normal IT operations so that they can go back to focusing on their key business proposition and their business operations. A lot of the, the traditional IT operations would provide capabilities around and can help manage as a, as a partnership. Wow, uh, I, I didn't realize you had the, the the uh, cross, you know, transatlantic type cables, or you know, across, across the ocean. That that's amazing. So, so you know, see, Google always has kind of the map of what they do. Uh, you know, the the cables that sharks can't bite through and things like that. Right. <laughs> so I, the another metric that's been thrown out pretty frequently is NTT carries about forty percent of the world's backbone. Wow. So it's it's a very significant wait, part. Wait, wait, is that Netflix? <laughs> Not just Netflix. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, I, absolutely. I, it's fascinating. Yeah, I, I guess I want to give you the final word. Uh, you know, we, we, we often talk about, you know, some of these seismic changes, what's going on in cloud, you know, what, where, where does NTT, uh, you know, position itself in, you know, the, this, this world of kind of the, you know, it's Amazons and Googles and of course IBM, the soft layer, uh, you know, where does NTT sit? So what we're interested in is we're not interested in a race to zero, right? And as you think about the bigger cloud providers, they're getting cheaper, doing more with less. Part of the value proposition we have is absolutely what I was saying earlier, the fact that we act as a partnership. We're able to provide additional hand-holding, provide, create a bespoke service, if you will, to help customers ease their journey into the cloud. All right, well, Jader Ho, thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. Fascinating case study uh, with uh, what you're doing with the cloud. Uh, Hannah, you know, really cool application uh, to, to do that, high performance and everything. So uh, we'll be right back, uh, okay, you know, wrapping up day two pretty soon uh, here at IBM Edge 2015. So theCUBE is starting to do their own events now, and it's really like the next step, the next evolution.